<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. This is Frank Salas, outsourcing expert to the Philippines, social media growth hacker, where I leverage social media to work for you. And by the way, I also sell real estate here in sunny Austin, Texas, where we have 300 days of sunshine. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce my favorite Filipina in the entire world, Diana May Fernandez at A Dolls Mastermind. Diana, tell the fine folk about yourself. Thank you so much, Frank, for having me. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate the warm welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so obviously, one, if you're on this platform, please share this up and give my boy Frank some love, the talented Mr. Salas himself. So as Frank said, my name is Diana May Fernandez. You guys can call me D, and I'm the founder of A Dolls Mastermind. And essentially what I do is that I help emerging female entrepreneurs turn their passions into something that is really, really tangible. And I coach them one-on-one -on -one through through my mastermind, through my affiliate program, T3C, which is the coaching content camp. And I basically just show them how to live their dreams out loud on purpose. Hey. <laughs> so, so D, you and I had connected on my broadcast in the Philippines, in your home country, where I was out there, you know, establishing some companies and you know, I didn't, I didn't know who you were and I just like, I'm Filipino. I was like, all right, cool. I got to reach out to her. And then we connected on Snapchat and yeah. we would have conversations. Yeah. We would just talk. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, there's people, there's people that are like me, that are just like me. They may cuss a little bit more, but they're just like me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. You call me out on it. It's true. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, can can you maybe tell people? So, so, so by the way, today we're talking about uh, this is a series that I'm doing on digital nomads, and I really want to serve my tribe by showcasing different uh, lifestyles that people have. And you're about to have some big changes in like the next few days. Can you walk us through what's about to happen in your life? Ooh, yes, I can. So before I address that, Frank, thank you. I just thought it was absolutely phenomenal how you and I had connected on Periscope, and I was like, who is? Who is this dude going into my home country and making noise? Like, I didn't even do that. So obviously it caught my attention. And then I saw the massive, the massive moves that you were doing. And just to really employ, you know, a number of people, especially that's what we need in the Philippines. So one, I just applaud you for going out there and making moves and just creating that space. So yes, I always gravitate to people that just have this idea and then just run with it you know, that take those risks and make those sacrifices and not even in their own home, in another country that they've never been in, don't even really know anyone. And you're like, I'm just going to do that. And so having said that, Frank, you know, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in London. Um, as a business coach, I know that the coaching industry here is heavily, heavily saturated. A lot of people just repurpose things and they use a lot of the same things over and over again. And for me, it's like, okay, great. I know that a lot of these techniques work and I know that a lot of people are now getting more comfortable with um, digital products, with online coaching and so forth. And I like to think that especially within the, the female online coach world or just in the coaching industry itself, I've broken a lot, a lot of barriers and so now for me, it's like, okay, well, what's the next step? I mean, I've done a lot of the things and now other people are just trying to catch up with me. So I'm just going to go to Europe and I'm going to create more opportunities. I don't know what it is that I'm really going to be doing out there, but I'm going to network my butt off. I know that I want to build Dolls Mastermind into a global brand. And I know that I'm not afraid of anything. So I'm just going to pull a Frank Salas and go to another country. <laughs> so, so literally Frank last week, um, you know, I, I was thinking about it and I was like, I'm going to go to Europe for a couple months. I'm going to Europe a couple months, make some connections, perhaps have some events out there. I know that my, my friend Minya and, um, and I are really trying to cultivate and create some things, some amazing events. In addition to that, I want to go out there and just write my book. And I was like, mm, I don't want to do it in New York city. I'll just go out to London, Switzerland, Paris and figure it out. So there you have it. <laughs> That's what what makes somebody just say, you know what? I'm taking my brand global. Walk us through that process. Well, I think I have to take it a, a little, um, you know, steps back in terms of my background. So I was working on Wall Street and I was supporting a multitude of entrepreneurs, a serial, true serial entrepreneurs, multi-million and billionaires. And I was helping a lot of sophisticated investors with their portfolios. I know that I told you a little bit about a, a lot about my background, Frank. So 
um, you know, with that said, I used to sit here and I would I would speak to these investors and I would pick their brains. And every time I would speak to them, they weren't sitting in their home office or, you know, the, uh, some office building. They would be speaking to me on a yacht somewhere. They would be in Bora Bora. They would be closing deals on, on in country clubs. And I'm sitting here like, I have access to these people. I pick their brains every single day for nearly a decade, right? And I was involved in like literally the 1% of America and I wasn't doing anything about it. It is crazy to me, especially now as an entrepreneur, I'm sure that you can resonate, Frank. It is crazy to me how much people have access to um, to people like this, even like, like, like you and I, and they're not picking their brain. They're not saying, hey, this is what it is that I want to do. So I was sick and tired, really, of being sick and tired. So I did something about it. That's that's really what it was. I was sick and tired of listening to every single person, every single day, closing million dollar deals, you know, just saying, okay, next week I'm just going to go to um, the south of France for a month. And I was sick and tired of booking their flights. I was sick and tired. <laughs> and, you know, it was me because I was an executive assistant. So I'm an executive assistant turned entrepreneur so i was sick and tired of doing everything for someone else and i was like no it's enough like i can do this i know that i have that wealth of knowledge and i know that i didn't give myself enough credit so i'm just going to keep moving forward i know that i'm going to fail along the way and i failed a lot of times and there's still a lot of moments where i am failing but i have to take those things and now really package it in a way where i can share my shortcomings and my pitfalls so that a lot of people can avoid it and Absolutely. that's why I'm taking my brand global. I love, I it. love it. I love it. I love and it. from that, that means uh, you're, t you're compressing time. You're, you're offering people to get the opportunity to compress time with you by learning from your, uh, I don't want to say failures, but just your bumps in the road, your your challenges. And, and what is, you know, a lot of people, like I have five coaches that I work with. I work with five consultants. I, I wouldn't call them coaches. I would call them consultants because you and I, like, we're branded as coaches because that's what the market likes. But truly, we are consultants. Mm -hmm. um, we offer lots of support, but we also offer a lot of exp expertise to yes. the marketplace. And for somebody who may be listening to this, who is maybe still stuck in an office, who may be an executive assistant or have some type of admin job, can you maybe um, walk us through on – your discovery process where you were like, this is my value to the marketplace and this is how I'm going to enter the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that question. So for me, I really think it's actually taking that realization and having that moment of self-awareness. That and it's that moment first. Like, I mean, I could literally, Frank. Honestly, I could sit here. You and I can both sit here and give someone a plan of attack. We can give them like a, a strategic plan of attack. Like, this is what you need to do within thirty days, sixty days, ninety days, right? But they won't be able to execute on any of those things unless they have that mindset and unless they have that self awareness that they're capable of it. Because the one thing, the one biggest thing. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say two. The two biggest thing that holds people back is fear and resistance, right? And, and obviously those are two of the same. So for me, is just being able to have that self-awareness. And when I have that self-awareness of when I started to first be a consultant, from being an executive assistant to a consultant, I decided, you know what? I'm going to train other executive assistants to be the best, uh, the best executive assistants on Wall Street in finance so i found an, a, a niche market and no one else was doing it in new york city so i was like well i worked with all of the sharks and all of the hot shots so i can use that as leverage but what started to happen frank is that i was coaching these executive assistants to support their uh their executives but then the executives these again these wealthy entrepreneurs had no idea what to do with their assistants. So I was that middle person sort of bridging everything together. Then I started to coach the entrepreneurs and I was like, wait a second, D you're onto something here. <laughs> but it's, but it's when you jump in and you actually go through the motions and you just jump in and you dive in head first that you really, really gain your own wealth of knowledge. And then from that, you will get that self awareness and you will have that confidence. And then now it opens a multitude of avenues for you to just think creatively and think of, okay, how do I serve more people? So I think once you have that self awareness and you really just take that leap of faith and understand that there might not necessarily be a safety net and you have to be okay with that because as an entrepreneur, we're taking risks every single day. 
every single day we're taking risks every single day we're putting ourselves out in the light every single day we're creating mm -hmm. and you just have to allow yourself to go through those motions and i think once you do um i mean there's so many doors that just open for you and if not create those doors you you are fearless right now and i know you're fearless because you're about to go to another country and and i'm fearless too but yeah. you know that, and that's us, like maybe on a podcast or on a on a on a Periscope or on a broadcast. I mean, there's times where we're human. You know, we have oh. challenges as well. Like the other day, I sent you a message like at midnight your time, eleven o'clock my time, and I was like, "Yo, I haven't loved on my girl D today." I just said, "Yo, D, in case anybody hasn't told you, you're you're the blanky blank." You know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. So so to walk us walk us through um, you know because so that was the start and that was and that was the shift and as you go down your path there's many challenges that come that come down your way how do you stay the course? Oh man, yeah, you know what, Frank, I, I really do have to give you that shout out because I know we're we're on our full hustle grind mode and when I got that like quick message from you it was a three second voice note and I was like man Frank just reshifted my whole entire day and I know that's what we do for one another. Right. And so this is what I want to share. When you find like minded individuals, when you find a group of people that are that have that same goals, visions, drive and ambition, you always want to keep them at your corner. Because I know even though Frank is doing his own thing and Frank knows that I'm out hustling, we know that if we need one another, we'll just like instantly call one another and that like shift that motivation, that drive, that ambition. And we've done that for each other a multitude of times, right? And Absolutely. we have a lot of people in our corner, in our network that do that for us. And so for me, you know, as a coach, I mean, I get mentally exhausted. I get um, I, I, I get tear down, not necessarily for my business, perhaps some things that's going on in my personal life, or there's just so many launches that I'm doing that I'm like, I literally don't know what to do. Or there are times where I struggle how to scale my business and you're going to hit so many different waves of emotions that in order for you to feed your self motivation, you need to be able to allow other people to, to help you because as entrepreneurs, the one thing that I have to share with you, I really hate the word solopreneur because I, I, you, in order for you to get a lot further in life, you need people at your corner. You need people that are going to help you, that are going to support you, which is why really great communities like the Talent Tribe, like Dolls Mastermind, there's going to be people, women, men, that are going to be there to keep on refueling, <laughs> refueling you when that gas tank is going on E, because I know there have been many times where I've been like pressing pressing the, the, that go pedal and I was like running on E. Mm -hmm. And then I had to take a step back and I had to be like, OK, I need a pit stop and I need like my army of people to just like come on love on me and just remind me that um, I'm here for a purpose. You know, I'm, I have to always come back to my why. Why did I start this business? Why did I want to do this? And I had to realize that all of the sacrifices that I'm making is always going to be worth it. So, yeah, just having that, just being around like minded people such as yourself, Frank, has really helped me. And, and back at you and back at you like when I was in the Philippines I had you know I've, I've got I've got seven companies right now and at the time I had six companies and I was going through lots of growing pains and just your support and just your friendship really helped me get through a lot of things and and seeing you go out and just you know conquer the world I was like yo I'm not alone in this you know I'm not alone in this at all so that support system is very crucial I want to shift mm -hmm. gears a little bit and I want to talk about you know that was that was your beginnings and you know we talked about where, where you're uh, headed right now but mm -hmm. I want to talk about your long term and your long term is dolls mastermind you said it earlier it's a global brand and of course I've got the talent tribe and you and I are going to nurture our yeah. tribe for the rest of our lives that's gonna yeah. fund so much of our uh, endeavors, our ventures, and all that. Can you maybe talk to people about um, how crucial a tribe is when you go in this business? Oh, man. And I know there's a couple of my dolls in here right now. So shout out to you, ladies. It is so important. When you vibe with your tribe, and they know that I say this all the time, when you vibe with your tribe, it just, it's it's that difference maker. It's a difference maker in your business because when you when you and your tribe really go through this process and this journey together and you allow them to see the world differently, 
they're going to start to show up differently. They're going to show up differently for their friends. They're going to show up differently for their family. They're going to show up differently for their business. And when they can really tie all of those things together, then a lot of those things don't really get convoluted, right? Because oftentimes we complicate things when the reality, it's it's just really simple. Like the solutions are simple. It's just to be complicated in our heads. But when you have a tribe of, of people that really support in your vision, in your message, and they really believe in who you are as a person, it's, it's again, it's, that's the ultimate game changer. That's the ultimate, ultimate game changer for me. And when I started Dolls Mastermind, in my head, I already had this vision of the type of women that I wanted to reach out to, the type of women that I wanted to speak to. And I didn't know where they were. You know, literally six months ago, I had no idea where they were. Similar to you, Frank, didn't have any follow. I started Dolls Mastermind from scratch, didn't have any followers on Periscope, didn't have an email list. Shit, I still don't have an email list. So I'm doing things so untraditional Mm -hmm. um, don't even really have a sales funnel, but it's because I believe in relationship building and, and, and how crucial that is in business that people are just, are, they can't help but gravitate to you. People cannot help but gravitate to you because they know that you are in business of service. So again, Frank, why, how, how you and I really, really are like-minded in that sense is that it's never just going to be about the sale. It's always going to be about the service first and foremost, which is why we constantly deliver value every single day mm -hmm. day in and day out i mean there's very few people that that i put on the same the same uh list with me of like putting out content on a consistent non-stop high octane basis because a lot of people hit start broadcast and they put a lot of you know just low quality stuff out there you know no names mentioned out there but you know and some of them get some of them get traction and that's fine but you always hear them you know talk about oh i got these many replays or these many retweets but i was like yeah. yo you know, I'm looking at your tribe and there's no likes in there. There's no people introducing each other. There, like, there's no vibe there. Nobody comes to support your stuff. It's always like you selling and saying, you know, there's, you know, for, for, for me, it's all about complimentary. Like I'm Saks Fifth Avenue. When you come to Saks, they give you a glass of wine. They give you Dos Equis, They give you champagne. They're like, enjoy yourself. Relax. Come shop. And you're the same way. You constantly give complimentary, not free. Nothing's free. But it's complimentary trainings, Absolutely. complimentary advice, complimentary consultations. And you do it in a way where you serve other people around you. And because of that, um, my thing is give value, give value, give value, serve, and then ask for business. And then ask for business. And I like at any, if I ever need money, I just pick up my phone and I, could, I have like 50 people, literally five zero, that I could call and say, hey, I'm calling to ask for your business. Yep. And then I just tell them, look, that's what it is. And I just generate revenue, you know, and oh, yeah. maybe out of those 50, maybe 25 buy, maybe 18 yeah. buy, maybe 12 buy. But you and I have delivered so much value in yeah. the marketplace that we can demand a, uh, a um, I don't want to say a pretty penny because that's like we're, that's like we're charged with. We can demand um, uh, a very good living for yep. the value that we bring. And it's, it's always, it's always over delivered. It's 100% oh, always over delivered. I don't care if you spend a dollar with me or if you drop 10 grand with me, or if you drop a yep. hundred grand with me, regardless, you're getting a million dollar service. How do you feel about that? Yep, exactly. I love it. And I know there's a lot of my dolls in here right now. And the dolls that are going to be catching this replay, Frank and I speak the same language. Right. Over delivery, over serve, over love, over, 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 over. And, and, and when you do that, you are attracting the right kinds of people to you all the time, all the time. You can't help it. And, and, and that's the thing. So, um, you know, Frank, one thing that you did touch upon is that it's not going to be about the quantity because I literally have less than 300 women in dolls mastermind, literally less than 300 women versus people that have, you know, five, 10, 15,000 people in their Facebook group. But guess what? My tribe of women are so badass. They're all friends now. They all, they all now collaborate. They all do business with one another and I empower that and I support that and I want them to do that. I brought them together in that space one, obviously to get coached by me so that I can show them because 60, 60 to 75, uh, sorry, 60 to 65% of those women in, in my tribe are all my clients. So of course, I'm not going to sit here and just say, Oh, you know, you can only work with me. Absolutely not go work together, go build your businesses, go build your empire, go network. Right. And, and because of that mentality and because of that mindset and that model, I was able to build a six figure net 
in Dolls Mastermind in four months. You can't do stuff like that if people don't believe in your brand, don't believe in your message, and you don't deliver value. It's just as simple as that. That's that's phenomenal, um, and and I love you know you and I talk you know more more in detail. We won't get in detail right now, but um, I, I like she's real deal, guys. I mean, Diana just drops it, and she drops <laughs> crazy stuff. My last soft launch. Um, by the way, again, I don't have any. I don't have Entreport. I don't have Aweber. I don't have Mailchimp. You'll never ever get an email from me. Never. You you never get an email from me, and you'll you will be breaking my door down asking me for business. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, yesterday. No, I'm sorry, two days ago, I had somebody um, ask, say, hey, Frank, I want your service. I want this, this, and this. And I said, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't served you enough to ask you for your business. I understand that you would like to work with me, and I'm going to offer you something when I have something ready for you, sir. And mm -hmm. to, in the meantime, you and I, our rabbit hole is going very deep, and mm -hmm. I will let you know when it's time to pull out that credit card. But just stay where you're at right now. I'm still <laughs> going to serve you. Just let rock the but I haven't served you enough, sir, to ask you for your business. And this guy wanted it like right now. He was like cussing me out and this, this, and that. And I told him the same thing. He hung up on me. Mm -hmm. Next day, mm -hmm. I wake up with eight referrals. Eight wow. referrals. Wow. Because because he, he was like, damn, this guy wouldn't wouldn't sell me anything. And most people would have jumped on that. They would have been like, oh, money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, man, relationships, serving. Mm -hmm building so can you maybe tell people about because uh, you drive sales like crazy you drive sales like crazy can you tell people how how you are okay because you have no you and I have no problem asking people for their business we we serve we serve every day so can you tell people who may not be at that level just yet once they put the work in I want to repeat that again once yes. they put the work in how does that asking for business go for you so for me is and, and and I and I love this question because I work with emerging female entrepreneurs and I know the the psychology with women is that they don't want to feel like sleazy asking for the sale and stuff like this and I said listen if you have a product or a service that you really really love that you know can serve people it is going to be easy for you to speak about it and I always say that you don't sell 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 you have a conversation you storytell, you connect with people. You can't go into every single sales call thinking I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close. I mean, obviously you want to, right? But it's like, it's just you having a conversation with someone. If you are not excited to talk about your business, if you are not excited to ask about your, ask for your business, then you need to take a step back and really evaluate what holes are missing in my business that I need to plug in in order for me to really love it so that I can speak about it. Because if you're unable to speak about it, then there's something wrong. There's there's like a disconnect there somewhere. So it's okay for you to take a step back to really reevaluate and see what's working and what's not working. Because when things are working and when things are in alignment with your business, you cannot help but be excited. And you cannot help but want to scream it out to the world. I know you, you and I, Frank, we're always so fired up when it comes to our business because we're like, we're going to snap this. We're going to talk about it. We're going to market this. We're going to scoop this. Like, I'm so fired up about, about my business all the time that I just want to tell everyone all the live long day. But I know I can't. So it's like, don't be afraid to ask. It's always going to be a no if you're not asking. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a 50% 50, 50 that is a high, high conversion. There's a 50% chance that you will get that yes if you ask, but if you never ask, it's always going to be a hundred percent. No, mm -hmm. and understand that yes lives in the land of no. So you're going to hear a lot of no's, a lot of no's, a lot of no's before you hear those yeses. But once you start hearing those yeses, it's momentum and you could get like a 90% closing conversion, just like some coaches I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And so, okay, let's, let's go down a little bit of that. Um, so you ask somebody for their business and people tell me the top three things is I don't have the time, I don't have the money, and I'm scared or some type of you know mindset issue. That's probably the top three that I hear. I'm sure it's the same thing you hear. How do you handle those types of responses? So I don't have time. Okay, great. So it's not a priority for you to change your whole entire life. Like if something is that important for you, there is no excuse. If something is not, if something is that important to you, then you are going to make time. Oh, great, you have a nine to five, cool. Guess what, you have a seven to two as well. Mm -hmm. Great, you have family and everyone does. Every single person, listen to me, Richard Branson, 
Tony Robbins, Mark Z, Elon Musk, all of those people have that same exact 24 hours as you do, and they're building global multi-billion dollar business. Do not tell me that you do not have time, because that is a load of BS. If you want it bad enough, you will make it work, because sleep, you can sacrifice sleep for your business, okay? So time, that is not a deciding factor. Money, that's not a deciding factor. Frank, you and I, you know, we talked about this a lot of times. I'm like, I sit here and I'm like, gosh, how do I make 10 grand in a week in order for me to, so I just, hi I, I hired um, um, a publicist to nice. help me write my book, which is why I'm gonna say, and that costs a pretty penny. So I'm sitting here, I'm like, how many clients do I have to close in order to pay for my, pub my really expensive publicist? Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, okay, I can either close five clients or I can close one and just stop, sell it really, really high end and like create and craft. So that's what I did, mm -hmm. right? That's literally what I did this week. And I was like, now I can pay my publicist and still go to Europe without being poor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's just one of those things that it's not money. It's your mindset around money. Because mm -hmm. if you think that you don't have it, guess what? You don't have it. So one thing that I really learned from Steve Mayer, and I absolutely love Steve Mayer, the stuff that I learned from him, is that it's not your lack of resources. It's your lack of resourcefulness. So you need to find a way to be resourceful. I, Frank, I remember one time you jumped on my scope and I was dying. I was like, oh, he would say this. He's like, you better, you better go steal, steal something. You better go, uh not really but like you better go ask money from your family you better sell something sell something on ebay it's again it's not that you don't have the money it's that you have the lack of resourcefulness and your mindset around it so lack of money bs lack of time bs what was the other one uh something with their <laughs> mindset like i'm scared oh. i don't want to hit star broadcast i don't want to put oh. myself out there fear mm -hmm. of failure fear of success you know the usual yeah. Oh, the typical the thing, things that we hear all day long. Every day. Oh, every single day. Look, if you look back on your life today, right? Wouldn't you have wished that you started a year from a, a year ago? You would have been in such a different situation. I mean, I I've kicked myself in the foot so many times. Like oh, I should have done this a long time ago. I should have been. I should have owned a home in Italy a long time ago. You know, I should have had a villa. I should have owned a yacht. I should have should have should have should have should have. And the and and the the one gun that's gonna kill you is that gonna right. <laughs> so it's like I, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna do it, and it's just like no stop. I got that from Caleb Maddox, by the way. Love so him. I got Love better work to do. So it's just, it's one of those things that you cannot allow the fear of failure to prevent you from moving forward. Because if that does, if you allow that to happen, guess what? You can't be living around the world doing whatever it is that you want. You can't build businesses that you love. You can't connect with like-minded individuals such as Frank and myself. And you can't have the freedom that you are most deserving of. And Frank and I sit here every single day saying, this life is tangible. We are literally showing it to you. We are handing it to you on a silver platter. And we're, show and we're literally grabbing you by the hand and showing it to you. But if you're allowing fear and excuses and whatever else is happening in the world to be your defining factor, that's on you 100 on you so you have to decide today whether you want to move forward tomorrow so that everything can change if not again that's all on you yeah and and here's one thing that i tell people when so when i talk with people and you know there's some people that are on the ledge and they're like i can't jump i say look i'm about to jump and down there somewhere down there i'm gonna be on my deathbed and i'm mm -hmm. gonna look back about all the cool shit that i did in my life and all Hell the businesses yeah. that i started and what are you going to be doing? Are you going to talk about all the cool stuff you did? Or are you talk about the regrets that you had? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I have, I everybody has regrets, and like yeah. I don't want to have any more regrets in my life. I I have enough regrets to to think about on my deathbed. I don't want any more. You know, and I'm sure most people are the same way. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that I tell people is, and I tell them straight. I was like, I tell them straight up. This is exactly what I say. Think about where I'm going to be when I die, and think about where you're going to be where you die. Because I know where I'm headed. I know where Diane's headed too. Diane is headed, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because I created graphics and like blogs and scopes about this is that guys, I have three words for you. Okay. Anyone that's listening to this, I need for you to hear this. Regret gets exhausting. <laughs> Regret gets fucking exhausting. Okay. And there are two, two phrases both of these phrases that have two words that is the death and it is the killer ready the first the first um two words is 
I'm fine. I'm fine at my nine to five that I hate. I'm fine in this loveless relationship. I'm fine being in this situation. I'm fine being broke. I'm fine living pay to, paycheck to paycheck. No. The second thing that is a killer, two words, the second phrase is, what if? What if I did this tomorrow? What if I, right? Stop killing yourself. Stop sitting in that place of regret and exhaustion. Because like Frank said, yeah, I'm just going to jump. And guess what you're going to do from there? You're going to build a damn plane, a helicopter, whatever, on your way down. There is no such thing as a safety net when you're trying to build something that you love. Jump. Figure it out. Figure it out. I love that. I love that. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna shift gears because I feel like people ain't ready for this work just yet. We're they're not ready for this just yet. I want to shift gears and I want to talk to I want to talk to you about. So you mentioned something earlier. You hired a publicist, and I want to break that down even further. Diana is building a global business with or without a publicist, and yeah. she knows that if she invests in herself and invests in a professional consultant like a publicist, that mm -hmm. she will get to that next level. She's here right now, and she's trying to. She's always shooting for up here, but to get up here, you got to climb the ladder. You got to, it's a mountain, it's an uphill mountain. And, Di and Diana and I are climbing that mountain. And as we're climbing, we're pulling people up. And sometimes we got to throw 10 people, 20 people on our back and still <laughs> climb up that thing. And there, mm -hmm. there gets points where like, hey, you guys got to get off. I'm trying to get up here and I, oh, I can't yeah. roll with you guys. And if you want to come up here, I need you guys to, you know, to really mm -hmm. commit and I can't hold you right now. Like this is, this is yeah. dangerous territory right now and we're rolling this way, but she, saw the value in procuring and seeking professional guidance. And um, and I'm sure you have multiple coaches. Can you tell people about the value that you've experienced from working with professionals? Oh, 100%. Look, the best investment that anyone can make is in yourself. 100%. That is the best investment that you can make, whether that's investment in your time and in your resources. Because you have to be real and honest with yourself, right? Like you don't know the things that you don't know. <laughs> and if you know that there's people that's a little bit ahead of the curve than you, yeah, you're going to reach out to them. Of course you're going to reach out to them. I'm not going to jump into anything, especially if I want to build a, a global brand and put Diana Mae Fernandez and Dolls Mastermind out there to spread my message further. I can't do that if I actually don't know what it is that I'm doing. I can't go in there blindly. Yeah, I want to jump, but guess what? I'm going to, I kind of want a parachute too. And I kind of want a plane. And if that parachute means um, having mentors, which I do, I have a lot of mentors. And if that, if that plane means that um, the proverbial plane is like a group of people that I'm masterminding and picking their brains of every single day, then that's what I need in order for me to soar and to fly. And 100%, I can't be in a position where I'm trying to help someone else up, but they're, I'm actually just right next to them. I have to be a little bit ahead of the curve. And in order for me to do that, I need to hire people that are within their field and that are, that are experts in it. I mean, I don't like using the word experts. I like using the word legends because I believe that legends produce legends. Yep. So I'm always going to look to work with the most legendary people so that they can um, accelerate me further. Absolutely. That's this is phenomenal stuff. This is phenomenal stuff. So we, you're working with experts. You're so, you're serving other people. You're traveling the world. You're you're changing lives. You're changing your own life. Um, you know, it's 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 a long process. You're in the building phase right now, and it's definitely paying off. For I want to switch gears a little bit and maybe talk to. There's some people who are listening to this live or listening to this replay, and there's somebody in here particular that uh, she knows who I'm talking about. Her. Uh, she has a lot of value to bring to the marketplace. She is. Um, uh, quite, quite honestly, very, uh, um, for lack of a better word, scared. I don't want to use the word scared, but for lack of a better word, scared um, about use, utilizing live stream. And I, mm -hmm. one of my quotes is, video killed the radio star, but live stream is killing the blogger. Literally right now, as we're doing this interview right now, no one has the time to listen to blogs. No one has the time to like even look at your Instagram anymore unless it's a video. We are used to doing things. Things that way people don't even want to Google stuff. I can't tell you how many times people ask me, Frank, can you do a Snapchat tutorial? I'm like, hey, I'm in the middle of a 30-day intensive. I don't have the time for that just yet. You can go to Google and find out. But they're like, I just want to hear from you. And that, that yeah. blew my mind. I was like, oh, pe people want to just learn stuff from certain people. They've chosen Absolutely. to follow you. And that's a privilege. That's an honor there. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who has yet to 
somebody who has yet to jump on live stream, can you tell them how live stream has changed your life? Wow. Oh my goodness. I mean, the live stream game and, and, and especially the community of people that we're involved with is mind blowing. I mean, mind blowing because here's the thing, right? I thought before that, oh, I'm just going to create a lot of really great YouTube videos like pre-recorded and then I'm just going to be um, really professional and, and speak and then go off on this script and just be super, just again, super professional and, and prompt. And then I spent a lot of aggravation <laughs> and time like trying to make these videos re-record and do it over and over. And I was like, man, one, I really suck. And then two, I sound super salesy and marketing and I keep it up. I keep it up on Dolls Mastermind so I can make fun of myself. <laughs> I, I do. I don't care. Cause I mean, yeah. it was six months ago. My business has, has built up. You got to be able to poke fun of yourself. The one thing that I love about live streaming, especially connecting like this, people are going to know you very quickly. Everyone can hide behind the screen and, t and put their little posts and tell all of these status and all that fun stuff. And people aren't what they post to be. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I go on live stream and you're going to know my personality right away. You're going to know whether you fucking hate me or you really, really love me. Cause I know there's a lot of people that don't resonate with my message. They don't res resonate with my vibe and my personality. And guess what? That's okay. Live stream has helped me filter out the people that I don't even want to deal with because you know, my personality instantaneously. And if you are mm -hmm. looking for, you know, instant value, and if you are looking for instant content, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to receive. And people know that within seconds you have that first impression very, very quickly versus anyone can sit here and write a beautiful blog post, but you're like, mm, how long did it really take you versus I just told you whatever it is that you needed to hear in four minutes. Right. That's phenomenal. Game changer. It, it's, it's an absolute game changer. Uh, I want to add some more. Uh, I want to add some more uh, value on that. So for me, I've been broadcasting since October of 2015. I have offline success and I had six businesses when I started live streaming. My first month I made 10 grand on Periscope, not no, only on Periscope. I now multi-stream on Blab, Busker, mm -hmm. Periscope, Facebook Live. I play the game on a very high level and I put my content out there in a mass way. But yeah. in October, I had no website. I had no email, no proper email address. It was like a talented Mr. Salas at Gmail. And the way for people to contact me was for them to go on Instagram and send me a, a direct message and say, I want their, I want your business. And I compelled people so much with my value about outsourcing and virtual assistance. And I hit them every day, three times a day. Yep. A few times I went 30. This was, this was, this was back in October when live stream was like brand new. Everyone was like, Oh my God, there was like this, this excitement around it. And at that time, I broadcasted 30 times a day for about three weeks, you know, just to like gain my following. And check this out. I went from 5,000 followers on my talented Mr. Silas account to going to the Philippines, having my account locked, and I had to start over. I and remember. right now, I'm about to break. I restarted at the end of, uh, end of March. Yeah. Yeah, I just restarted at the end of March. Right now, it's like June 10th. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to break a thousand followers and people are slowly, you know, finding out, okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, Daniel Roberts says the bad boys of Periscope. I remember, yo. So yeah, here's, here's, here's a confession. <laughs> here's a confession. When I was first on Periscope, I didn't yeah. know what I was doing and I was trying to meet chicks. And so I just wrote bad boys of Periscope and I was showing them how we, how I'm on my rooftop <laughs> with my boys, we're partying. Yo, we, we got these kind of rides. And, and then if, if you would go, to, <laughs> if you would go on Instagram, and if you would upload a, a photo of yourself with the hashtag bad boys of Periscope with the Z on the bad boys, me and my boys would fly you and your girls out <laughs> to come party with us. That's what I started you're doing cool. on Periscope. You're a trip, Frank Salas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. These are the conversations that we have, like, offline by Periscope. <laughs> savage. My boy is a savage. No I love chill. It. No I, chill. I love no chill factors. <laughs> that you should go about life no chills right so it but i went from that you know to to realizing one day i was showing my virtual assistants and my real estate business because i was like hey hey guys by the way i'm a professional i'm not just trying to hook up with chicks all the time i don't, I don't go, always go to parties and this and that so so here's what i do for in real life irl and i was showing them my my real estate side and they saw my virtual assistants and when yeah. I when I was just talking to them, but I wasn't selling. I was just demonstrating value and saying, "This is my business. This is how I use this particular product or service with my business, and this is how it affects me in a very positive manner." Mm -hmm. And at the end of that very first time when I talked about virtual assistants, I think there was like a hundred people in the room at the time 
who had known me for something else completely that were like, oh my God, I want this. How yes. do we get a hold of you? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, well, here's my number. I, and I didn't, I didn't think anybody was, my, my phone blew up and I was like, okay, I should probably not give my phone number out because, you know, people are going to call you up and hit you up with all, that are unqualified, that, you know, X, Y, and Z, yes. you know, mm-hmm. so I need to have some screening tools in there, but I knew there was something there and I made that switch to it. So can you, can you tell people about that aha moment where just things blew up when you were just like this Periscope thing, this live stream thing, this social media thing is where it's at and where it's going to be. We're literally in its infancy. Periscope dropped in March of 2015. That is 15 months ago, guys, 15 Mm -hmm. months. We got another 18 months before it has mass acceptance. And then it starts to hit that hockey stick curve and we are already in the game right now. So can you tell people about your aha moment? Uh, my aha moment is when I made my first four thousand dollars on Periscope, and then the following week I made fifteen thousand, and I was like, "Aha! It worked." <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I first started Periscope, literally had no idea what I was doing. I think my first Periscope still have it on YouTube because I don't care, and I am as. Even though I'm like a total, I know that I'm a total hotshot in business. I am so ridiculous and so weird that like my first Periscope, I was like, let's have a Periscope dance party, everyone. And I was just dancing in my room and I was like, this should work, right? <laughs> and and so at that time, I was still looking in a multitude of Facebook groups. So I was just trying to see like what all these other consultants, these coaches, these business, entre- these entrepreneurs, what they were doing. And I was like considering myself like a Facebook lurker, like, oh, man, they have such really great posts. They have such whatever. And then I would sit there um, and. I would go into these web, um, these webinars or these tele summits, and then I would see people in their posts, and then I would see them jump into these tele series, and I was like, "That's not the same person that I thought was going to come out from the post." And then, whereas me, I was like, "Sometimes my post doesn't really come across with that much personality," but obviously, when I jump on live stream, it's like spewing out of personality. So I was like, "This is going to work." I knew that if I just Uh, chose a platform or in this case a multitude of platforms because now I just stream everywhere Mm -hmm. that if I'm consistent and I have that level of continuity I'm gonna pick up traction and I was right the first couple of days the first even the first couple of weeks I was just slugging it out and it felt like I was speaking to an empty classroom (laughs) an empty classroom of people but once I started to pick up momentum and traction and I found a system that really worked for me to drive people onto my periscope and to listen to the content that I had I knew that I was able to monetize. And so for me is that every single project that I'm going to do, every single thing that I'm going to move forward again as an entrepreneur, if I can monetize off of this, hell yeah, of course I'm going to try it. So I tried it. So I did a five day challenge on Periscope. um, And at the end of the five day challenge, I pitched a product for like a hundred bucks. And a lot of people bought it because I totally undervalued my whole thing. Right. And I was like, oh, it's a, it's a hundred bucks. It's fine. And I made $4,000 in it. Hey. You know? And then afterwards I was like, you know what? Now I'm going to sell, I'm going to see if I could sell my one-on-one coaching programs mm-hmm. for, for 90 days. And so I did that. And then I, I, I pitched it for a week on Periscope. And then um, the last night of me pitching it, I made $15,000 of sales in in 48 hours for me that was a no-brainer I was like this is this is working I'm on to something and then from there I was like I'm just gonna keep on doing this so all of my marketing efforts even my marketing efforts I'm gonna share this with you very quickly for T3C the coach and content camp which really has only been in fruition for like two months Mm -hmm. um, the way that we made our sales is we were on we had a webinar in front of us my myself and my business partner Stephanie. we had a webinar in front of us we were live streaming in two facebook groups we were on periscope and we were also snapping it was like the mothership of everything so <laughs> we were like, hey everyone how are you just like speaking and right. then from seven days we were able to generate thirty one thousand dollars in sales no email marketing would have been able to do that right mm-hmm. no um None of the sales funnel. It's like really just being able to connect with people and letting them hear your authenticity. And it wasn't like sitting in a webinar saying, look at this slide point. Look at this. Power. <laughs> no, look at me. I'm speaking to you. Let me just speak to you like a normal human being. So when you know that 
when you come into work with me to get coached by me, you know what you're getting. It's mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm. Live streaming. It's the I business. love that. I love that. So I'm 28 years old. I've been self-employed since I was 20 um, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've got 14 companies under my belt. I've got uh, three in the hopper right now that I'm desperately can't wait to get my hands on, but yeah. I've got to serve my tribe and I've got to build up others to get that support system around me. And I currently don't partner with anybody. Um, and I actually, I, I, you and I did a 30 day intensive at the same time. And this is why I love Diana. I, I asked her, I said, Hey, can we do a 30 day intensive together? I think it'd be cool. And you're like, Frank, I love you, but I'm serving women. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, like that's that's phenomenal. I, I like I, I I already loved you, but I was just like infatuated with you when you said that. I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. This woman who who knows her target demographic, not even target, I don't I don't like the word target demographic, her target follower. Her target yeah. follower. She knows that person so much that mm -hmm. she was able to say somebody like myself, and I'm not trying to big up myself or anything, but no. I'm kind of a big deal. I'm kind yeah. of a big deal. And and she was like, so, you know, sorry, Frank, you know, I'm only serving women. And then on top of that, the next day she was like, yo, this dude tried to join my thing. I gave him his money back. And, and here's here, here's yeah. Frank. He's a dude. He'll take you. You know, I'm like, I'm like, word, word. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that did happen. Listen, I thank you, Frank. I, and I love it. I love that I was like, hey, listen, boo, you know I love you. You know that I got respect for you. You know that I'll like, if you told me to freaking um, go to war with you, I'll do it. But uh, I'm not going to be doing this project with you. But I love you. Right. Uh, that was cool. <laughs> and it's true. But it's one of those things that when you know your client so well, you have to be laser focused on him, on her, on them. Right. And I know that there is other projects right now that um, I'm working on where I might, um, you know, shift. I might shift gears and I might, you know, might partner up with Frank or we are partnering up. But 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 for for something that I know that specifically for a project, my heart and my soul and my energy has to just be for that specific audience. I can't deter. I just can't. But. Again, one thing that you're going to know with a, with um, um, having a network of like-minded entrepreneurs is that you're going to leverage one another all the time. Because even though I may not be able to serve someone, I know someone within my pipeline that can. So I'll always direct people to Frank if I feel that it is a good fit. And it's true. The, the following day, I was like, hey, Frank, you know, this guy tried to buy my program. And I was like, oh, oops, sorry, you can't invest with me, but you can invest with my boyfriend. Right. That was, yeah. and, that, and that was really cool. That was really cool. So, um, can, and I know you work so well with other people and you work so well with other coaches. I think you have a uh, Courtney and Stephanie that you're rolling with. Yeah. And now you're working with my girl, Mina out in, and across yes. the pond over there. Yeah. So how does somebody, you know, cause, and, and I, this might be a female thing. Cause like dudes go to battle by themselves. Like, yo, y'all don't want to oh. roll. Let's roll. I'm, I'm good. I don't need no, I, I don't need no food. I don't need no water. I got two swords. Come get, come get this work. <laughs> Let's roll. I'm eating people. I'm drinking blood. Let's let's get this work. Let's give this 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 marketplace this work. But I see the value. And one thing that I got a value from you is you partner with other people. You're able to do more things. So if somebody um, is, you know, obviously getting their, themselves out there like that, how do mm -hmm. you approach somebody to maybe even get that involved? Because you're doing something very personal with your tribe mm -hmm. that you started and you brought other people to your Absolutely. very curated list that you've Thank nurtured you. and built relationships with. Can you walk us through that, please? 100% I did. Listen, Frank, and 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 uh, I'm going to take the situation where you just shared, where I, yeah. and I wasn't going to share that where you were like, oh, yeah, Diana okay. said no, she didn't want to work with me on this project. Um, <laughs> and every single day I have people asking to want to work with me, to collaborate with me, to put the dolls mastermind, the Diana May stamp of approval of it. I say no a lot more times than I say yes. Just the same way as I, as I, I used to hear a lot of people say no to me. Um, you know, I, I have to say no because I value my time very much. And this goes into getting an influencer's attention. So I'm going to merge these two topics together, Frank. Ready? Right. Is that you cannot just reach out to someone and just be like, hey, I really like this. Let's collaborate. Never built a relationship. Nothing like that before. Like you have to build genuine relationships with people because I say this all the time. People invest in people, whether that's um, investment in resources or in time. Right. And, and the thing is, Frank, like Frank, you and I, we have developed our friendship for a long time, a couple months already. And in the online space, in the live stream space, that's a long time. 
Right. right? <laughs> and and Frank to me is, is, is straight up family. So up. when we had approached one another to say, hey, you know what, maybe we should do something um, in, in the Philippines together. Perhaps let's let's throw a project together. It's not like we just met on Periscope and we we're like the next day we're like, let's do business together. No. <laughs> We built genuine relationships. We wanted to get to know the other person because when you're just reaching out to someone, say, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z with you, it's like you're just trying to ride their coattail. No one wants that. And we could see right through stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if you want to get our attention, get our attention by providing value, by building genuine relationships, and being able to nurture that every single day. The way that you want to get our attention is the way that you want to get your client's attention as well. Mm -hmm. So collaborations it has to be organic it can't be forced because the thing is stephanie and and courtney and courtney they're my best friends literally they're my best friends i i just started to work with courtney probably a month and a half ago a month and a half ago and i'm her bridesmaid she just got engaged yeah. like last nice. week and i'm her bridesmaid to her wedding so with stuff like that it's like you can't force any of those things. You can't force genuine relationships. You can't force connections. It's almost like even being in a relationship, right? You can't, you can't fake anything. You can't, um, right? So it's just like, it's the same thing in business. You have to be 100% authentic and genuine in every single thing that you do. There are times where I'm speaking to my clients and I'm like, you are literally boring the shit out of me. What are you, <laughs> why are you wasting time? Stop. And it's like, you have to be 100% transparent in, in however you go about it. And mm -hmm. You want to do collaborations? Provide value because Absolutely. I know that Stephanie and Courtney had provided a lot of value, for, a lot of value for me, for me to be able to say, "Hey, let me share this idea with you. Let me share my global empire with you." A lot of value from a sea of all of these women that were just trying to to work with me and just have that Diana May Fernandez at Dolls Mastermind brand attached to them. That's the difference. I love that. I love that. We're, we're going to shut down because I know you and I uh, have meetings after this because oh, we're, yes, we're, 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 we're about that life. Um, but you've been such a treasure, such a pleasure to just all like this is like our, our second or third part. This is our, our third one together, yeah. right? It's, it's this our third third one. One. Oh, my God. We're getting serious. Oh, my God. <laughs> so so uh, I want to I want to end it with this. If somebody right now who's listening to this, this is again the Digital Nomad series, they're in a job that they hate, maybe they're thinking about starting the business and they have all these wants and desires, what's the one thing? What's the one thing that they need to take away from this conversation? The one thing that they, they have to take away from this conversation, and I guess I, I really like getting to the point with um, the two words. So I have two words for you, ready? Ready. Start starting, start starting. Whether that's start starting on your business, start starting on mapping out and, and, and execute on them. It's always just going to be those two words. Start starting. Not tomorrow, not a year from now, not whatever. Today. Start starting today. And that's it. Cool, cool. Well, Diana, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure serving my tribe with you. Thank you for allowing us to just get that knowledge and swagger. Um, you know, and I'm going to be seeing you in the field. I'm going to be seeing you in Las Vegas. I'm going to be seeing you in the Philippines, and I'm probably going to go to L.A. with you guys. Pro yes. Probably going to go down. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm going from, like, London to Vegas and then Vegas to L.A. to Philippines. And there you are, Frank Salas, globe trotting with me. I love it. Love it. And most importantly, I love you, Frank. Thank you so much for having me. Big shout out to the Talent Tribe. And share this up, guys. Mwah. Thank you for having me. So, so D, how can people get a hold of you if, if you're if you're a chick? So if you're not a dude, sorry. If you're a dude, come roll with your boy at the Talent Tribe. But if you're if you're <laughs> a, a boss babe and you want to be in the Dolls Mastermind, how does that go down? If you want to be part of Dolls Mastermind, you can follow me everywhere on social media at Dolls Mastermind. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Periscope, and you are more than welcome to come into my tribe at Dolls Mastermind on Facebook. I welcome you with open arms. The women are going to welcome you with open arms because we are here to empower, support, and motivate one another. So there you have it. And I want to make a point. She did not mention the website. She did not mention if you click this, you get a free whatever. Oh, yeah. she, you know, she's like, there's no phone number to call in. She's like, I know that I've given you so much value in this four, in this 56 minute conversation that what are you waiting for? 
come join me. And that's how everybody should be in their yeah. business. You know, not everyone is a, is a doll's mastermind. Not everyone's in the talent tribe, but you have your own tribe, your own unique yeah. value to bring to the marketplace. And someone's going to listen to a Frank Salas. Someone's going to listen to a Diana Mae Fernandez and someone will listen to you. So thank you again for allowing us to just get that wisdom and knowledge. And you, you always come through with that fire and I can't wait for our next lab. Love you, boo. Thank you guys for having me and I'll speak to you soon. All right. And if you guys want to be a part of the Talent Tribe, go to the Facebook and type in Talent Tribe or go to bit.ly forward slash Talented One to be part of my inner circle. You can find me on all social media at Talented Mr. Salas. I have pledged my service to transform those with talent and transform them into thought leaders. See you guys.